welcome to this edition of the Feral Phelps Show. My guest today is none other than Dr. Shana Lewis. Welcome her to the show. <laughs> you know, I'm really excited to have you on the show. Number one, I've seen you on Facebook. Yes. And man, I, I was so motivated watching one of your one of your talks, I'm mm -hmm. going to call it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was so positive and motivating for me. I'm like, man, I've got to get in touch with Dr. Shana yes. so she can come on the Feral Phelps show. And uh, I, I reached out to you. Yes, you did. And I said, you've got to come on my show one day so we can talk about this thing. Yes, and thank you for the invitation. Absolutely. Thank you for showing up, yes. man. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to getting motivated. Yes, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> and, you know, one of the things for me, Shana, you know, it's the beginning of the year. Mm. And so we always want to do these different things every time a new year comes. Mm. We have these... Uh, what do we call them? Resolutions? What's what we call them? <laughs> <laughs> we call them resolutions? Yes. Now, whether they happen or not, we don't know. Uh, uh, so I want to touch on that a little bit. Yes, yeah, sure. You know, what do you say about people that set the resolutions and can't keep them? Okay, so here's the, the statistics. 88% of people who set resolutions do not meet them. 88%? 88%. So that means we just shouldn't even do them. Because we don't do them. <laughs> what happens is we set, we'll talk about, we set goals that are way too big. They're not realistic. We mm -hmm. don't have a, a plan for them. It sounds good. I'm just going to lose 100 pounds. Okay. Good idea. Mm -hmm. But how do you do that? Right. So that's why they don't work. I, I, I subscribe to something very different, which is creating transformational goals that you can actually walk out. So I don't believe in New Year's resolutions. Okay, and you call that transformational goals? Yes. T tell me a little bit more about a transformational goal. Oh, let's just start with transformation first. So, All right. So, you know, we talk about, I want to make some changes. Well, you can make a change. I'm a woman. I have changed mm -hmm. my mind ten times this morning about what shoes I was wearing, <laughs> what shirt I was going to wear, what earrings I was going to wear, and I'm not making this up. This is what happened this, this morning. Is real talk. <laughs> this is real talk. <laughs> and so I can change is ever-changing. So you can change okay. your mind and change back. Transformation, though, is a conversion. Never to return to your previous state of being. Very wow, different. Wow, I like that transformation. Is never to return. So I always think about the butterfly. So once she's an egg, a larva, and all these other things, and she exits the chrysalis, and never now goes back. She can never be an egg again. Come on now. Because she has now transformed. So my objective is to teach people how to transform, not just change. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> This is a sister after my own heart. <laughs> uh, and uh, she jokingly said, you're my brother from another mother. Earlier, you know? <laughs> and I can certainly identify with that because I, I, obviously our mindsets are a lot alike. Absolutely. And I, I, when I listen to you speak, I'm like, man, that's me <laughs> in a female version. Uh, right, right. Uh, you know, when I, when I listen to you. Uh, now, there are five points that, that, we, that you mentioned to me yeah. uh, that are key points. And uh, I'm going to start with the first one. Uh, get honest. Get honest. That's the first point. Tell me a little bit about get honest. We lie all the time to, to ourselves. ourselves. Yes, we do. Ooh, we lie all the time. I was talking about this today in, in, in therapy. I'm a therapist by day, so this is, that's my day job. Yeah. And so I was working with a client today, and I had the conversation. The lies we tell ourselves to get ourselves to sleep at night. Lots of them. Mm. So the first thing is you, you can't get anything done if you're not being honest with yourself. You have to first identify that you have an issue and what the real issue is. Yeah. And so when I'm telling myself that that cookie not going to hurt me, yeah. I could just have a few of them and mm. be all right. Mm -hmm. That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I had some from Double Tree today. See, see, see. Because if your, if your resolution was to lose 50 pounds, yeah. that cookie not going to help you get there. I already lied to myself. Exactly. That's a lie. So we have to be honest. And not until you're honest with yourself and then honest with other people. That's a whole nother scenario and storyline. Okay. We talk okay. about it. but honesty with yourself is majorly important that's the first step to to anything that we need to get done absolutely in order to I, and i say it often you know in order to keep it in order to heal you got to keep it real oh come on you now. know so you have to be honest with yourself yes you do. so you can get to the root absolutely. of whatever that problem absolutely. is absolutely so if you're driving a car and you have a flat tire you don't go to the mechanic and say hey i need to get my engine fixed no fix the tire please fix the tire you <laughs> yes. got to get to the root of whatever that problem absolutely is now do. point number two own what your give wait own what's your giveaway and what's not. Okay, here own we go. Own what's your giveaway and what's not. Explain that. I got you. So own what's yours, <coughs> give away what's not. So you got to own your stuff. Mm, okay. And I'm going to give away what don't belong to me. Mm -hmm. See, sometimes we take on other people's stuff. So, yeah. And so if there's an issue, all that's not yours. So if it's a relationship problem, mm -hmm. it can't be all your fault with something that went wrong. It takes two people in that situation. So I'm going to own my part, then you own yours, and then we can work this thing out. In the middle. In the middle. 
But if I'm carrying your bags and mine, we in trouble because my back broke at this point. Exactly. <laughs> and what good are you with a broke back? Uh, we're not going to get very far. All right. All right. <laughs> so it's majorly important. In order for us to move forward in life, we really have to be clear about what belongs to us. You can't do anything about something that's not yours. Like, I can't go to your house with my key and try to put my key. It's never going to work because it's right. not mine. I can only deal with what's mine. And that's where our power is. That's mm. where all the power is. Dealing with ourselves. Absolutely. And owning what's yours. First, they're getting honest about what's mine. Right. Then I can deal with it. And then you can deal with it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, I, this, I'm, I'm, I'm healing already. <laughs> we yes. ain't got the party started yet. Yes. I'm healing, all right? Yes. Uh, and, and I knew that this was going to be that kind of show when I uh, invited uh, Dr. Shana Lewis on onto the show. Uh, so I was so excited about it Yay. because I always like to get nuggets of, of motivation absolutely uh, along my life's journey. Absolutely, and these different nuggets add up to something they big. They do, and at this moment, it's one of those nuggets. It is for me, it is. and so I'm, I'm very thankful for the nugget. Now, a third point is to change your language. Yes, change your language, change your life. Change your language, change your life. Yes. So as a, a licensed professional counselor, mm -hmm. my theoretical orientation, if you will, is what we call cognitive behavioral therapy. Okay. So basically what that means is we look at what you think, how what you think makes you feel, and how you feel makes you do. So if you think, oh, life is wonderful, you're going to feel how? Wonderful. Yes. And what do you do when you feel wonderful? You, you, you walk out into life as a wonderful person. Exactly. You behave that way. You do. You're positive. Absolutely. Energetic. Absolutely. But if you think the opposite, you know, life is horrible, nobody loves me, how do you feel? Absolutely. And what do you do? Absolutely. So, <laughs> the objective here is to create thoughts that are going to move you in the direction of where you want to go. So, if you have the secondary thought, which is negative, it gets I call them self-defeating. It gets you nothing that you want. Yeah. Zero. At the end of the day, if I line up 100 people in a room and I ask them all, what do they want? It's 100 different versions of whatever your happy is. But that negative thought will never, ever, ever ever, 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 mm. get you there. Mm. You have to change your language, change your life. Absolutely. Man, you all up and down, my son. <laughs> look, look, you're going to let me in. Yeah, I'm going to let you in. I'm going to let you in for sure. And you know, th this is what I was expecting from you. Yes. I was expecting this type of motivation, yes. and you're giving me like 110% of what I was expecting. Well, excellent. I so, always want to do it. And that's what you're doing. You're doing it. Now, uh, one of the fourth points is create realistic... Uh, transformational goal. Yes. So let's talk about that. So I already described what transformation is earlier. Yes. That's the conversion from one place to another, never to return to the <coughs> place you were before. So transformational goals are goals that I always tell folks, look at your pain points. Look at where you hurt, because that's mm. where you need a transformation. See, I can tell you I need this or that, but if it doesn't really hurt, yeah. then how much energy do I really need to spend toward that? Exactly. I need to deal with the pain. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. That is how we heal, like what you said earlier, yeah. and then you get your freedom from that. Absolutely. You do. So in a transformational goal, you look at your pain points first, and then you determine, okay, this is the pain point, this is what happens because of it. So mm -hmm. if my pain point um, is, you know, uh, let's say it is weight perhaps, maybe I, I need to lose weight, but it, the impact of that pain point means I, I can't play with my children as long as I want to, uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I may have <coughs> lots of health problems, so it means it's really serious, I need to do something about it. Gotcha. So once you figure that out, a transformation has to occur. You never want to return back to the previous state of the initial pain point. So yeah. if I need to lose 100 pounds, you don't want to lose it to just regain it. Right. You see what I mean? So you got to create a goal that allows you to transform and not just change. So that goal, first of all, has to be 90 days increments. Because okay. we said, that's why our resolutions don't work. Because we say, January 1, I'm use 100 pounds. Uh, yeah, okay. So it's too big and we don't do it. But right. if you look in 90 days, okay, how much of that 100 can I lose in 90 days? Right. So I can lose maybe 30 pounds in the first 90 days. Okay, so we can chunk that down and we can do all these 30, day, 30 pounds every 90 days and eventually lose what we want to lose at the end of the day. Okay. So you, you chunk them to 90 days and then you create a plan in that 90 days on once a month. What does it look like? Once a week, what do I need to do? Every uh, day, what do I need to so do? So you're basically breaking it down you so that you can get to that, to that yes. main goal. Yes. You and so you, you're back. actually building. Yeah, you build. The way. Exactly. All right. Exactly. I, you know, I'm really excited about all these points. We're going to return in just a moment. Okay. But uh, when we get that last and final point uh, with Dr. Shana Lewis, stick around. We'll be back in just a moment. <laughs>
Tired of wasting time threading needles? What would you do with more time? Would you spend it with family? Grow your business? Take a class or travel? There's a remarkable new tool available to help make your dream for more time a reality. The Easy Needle Multi-Threader was designed for weavers, seamstresses, and quilters to thread multiple needles in a fraction of the time than traditional methods. It eliminates tangles and prevents the possibility of germs and bacteria due to fallen needles and threads onto the floor. It's efficient, it's innovative, it's a time saver. Increase your productivity with Easy Needle Multi-Threader today. Sky Trues Custom Eyewear has taken the world by storm. In only eight months, Sky Trues has gained the eyes of many, including celebs like Big Sean, Little Flip, Destiny Child, Soldier Boy, just to name a few. Through custom design, Sky Trues can put your imagination on your frames. I bring to you the next big thing in Houston, Sky Trues, created by Golden Boy, the musician, the artist, the entrepreneur, and grassroots marketing genius. Be inspired, Sky Trues, custom designed frames. Sky Trues! All right, welcome back to this edition of the Feral Phelps Show with my guest, as you know, Dr. Shayna Lewis. Welcome back, Shayna. Hello, welcome. Nice to meet you. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, like I told you before, I was so excited about you coming on the show yes. because I got familiar with you on Facebook. You know, social media can be a great source yes, of information for us when we use it the right way. Oh, no, tell the truth. Come tell on now. Truth. You tell gotta use it the right way in yes. a positive manner. Yes. And uh, these types of things get you recognized and noticed. And that had you not did what you did on social media, I wouldn't have recognized. Nice to That's notice very you. True. Look so at I, that. there you go. That like good it. positive influence. Yes. Yeah. You know. Now we were talking about uh, the five points. Yes. Uh, which are all significant points in transformation mm -hmm. for all of us. Mm -hmm. uh, and now we have gotten down to the fourth point, uh, and that is to apply the secret sauce. Yeah. Come on now. Oh, now no, last no. time I heard about the secret <laughs> sauce was McDonald's. So this, look, this, look, this look. Dr. Shane Lewis it's secret Dr. sauce. Dr. Shane secret sauce. Now, no, they say if I tell you, I gotta kill you. Now. Uh -oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> no, no, no. Let me get my powers <laughs> <and> paid up. <laughs> so this is the secret sauce. I, I believe that there are several things and when we create the transformational goals we just talked about. The secret sauce to help you walk them out um, every single day. So the first thing is you gotta be intentional. Mm. you got to wake up and have intention. So your intentions become the goal. It's the bedrock of why we get up and do what we do. Right. Because my intention is to X, Y, Z. And then we have to be prepared. Because if I don't prepare myself, yeah. I can't meet the intention. So if my intention, we're using weight. Not that anybody in this room needs to lose any weight. But it's just, it's just the one I'm using. I have to be prepared. So I have to have good meals, healthy meals. That means i got to go to the store, like my grandma would say, make groceries early <laughs> so that I can cook and prepare right. them. I have to... Maybe get with the uh, gym to have, you know, some um, workouts and things. So you got to prepare yourself. Then you have to be on purpose. Because you can just kind of wait and see what happens. But if you don't make on purpose behavioral choices, I promise you, you'll be in the same spot that you were in before. You right. said, this is what I wanted to do. Mm. Yes, right. And that's a daily occurrence. So we can't just decide one day and never decide again. Yeah. And so I'm really big about that. One of the affirmations that I teach is, today I decide. Mm -hmm. Because then I believe we have to decide every single morning. Whatever you need in your day, right. you need to decide it on purpose so that it can show up. Um, then you also need to be committed. Because you can be, you know, and every commitment is different. So one goal, so if I'm homeless, my goal, I may be more committed to that than I am to losing weight. Because I need a right. place to stay. stay so <laughs> number one. Right. So your commitment is going to be indicative of the energy that you spend toward that goal. Gotcha. So um, those are the things that are majorly important. If we don't crack the secret sauce, it don't taste right. You Come know what now. I'm saying? If they add a little bit more flavor yes. to it. Yes. And then the last thing is to be disciplined. So okay. discipline is doing what needs to be done, when it needs to be done, and doing it the same way all the time. So if I do it today and not tomorrow, guess what happens? It doesn't work. If I do it on Thursday but not on Friday, it doesn't work. You have to be disciplined every single day. But you have to decide that daily. And yeah. then you win. Big. 
Absolutely. And you will Absolutely. Be. And you know, discipline is everything. Oh, yes. Isn't it? You know, yes. and I know I'm going to use myself as an example. Yes. yes. You know, I'm always talking about losing weight. You know, I'm mm -hmm. like, I want to, you know, give my little stomach. Y'all right <laughs> wasn't talking about you, Pharaoh. Uh, you know, talking about me on the cool, y'all. She's talking about me. I wasn't about me. talking about you. <laughs> I know, so, I, so I say every year, you know, I, I don't say it every year. I just say it throughout the year. Okay. I, I, and I tell my brother, I say, give me two weeks. <laughs> say, two weeks, man, we're going to do my photo shoot for my yeah, promos. And, yeah, that, yeah. and that two weeks go in another two weeks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> another two weeks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and before you know it, I haven't reached my, exactly. my desired goal. Exactly. Uh, so when you talk about that, I understand exactly what it is mm -hmm. that you're talking about because I apply it to my own life. Yes. And, and I notice that when I live on purpose, my day go better. Doesn't it? Oh, my God. You know, and today was an example of that. Last night I made a list of all the things I wanted to accomplish yeah. today, and then I set out to get all those things done, and I got all those things done, and I got to the studio and I felt so good. I'm like, yes, yeah, that's you know? how you stay motivated. It, it yes, it, it helps me to stay motivated, and I practice it, but I need to practice it more so I can be like you, <laughs> and and I want to transform. Yes, you know, and I don't ever want to go back. Don't return. You know, so it, there is so much to learn from Dr. Shayna Lewis oh. that is just unbelievable. So I want to have you back on the show. This, absolutely. 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 So you're going to come back. Don't you guys agree? Yeah. yeah. You know, and the whole purpose of this show is to be uh, educated, motivated, and inspired. Yes. And when I have guests like yourself, I know that's exactly what my audience is getting. Definitely. Without any doubt. You guys stick around. We're going to be back with attorney Renfro, who is running for criminal court 13 in Harris County. We'll be back in just a moment. Mm -hmm. Women invest a lot of valuable time in their stylish chair, creating and maintaining a polished image. Having been in the beauty industry for over 35 years, I have witnessed this investment firsthand. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Jackson and I'm the owner of Interactive Hair Studio. I love doing hair, I love uh, being creative, I love um, giving someone options. Through the years, I began to notice how much time was being spent threading needles during the weaving process. In salons everywhere, clients were threading needles for their stylists to save time instead of relaxing and enjoying the experience. We had to use towels and sometimes mannequin heads or oftentimes your own clothes where you, you thread a lot of needles and you just have them ready so you can move faster. I knew that this was not the kind of experience that I wanted to provide for my clients, so I created a better way. The Easy Needle Multi-Threader is designed to make the weave installation process faster and easier, all in five simple steps. All you have to do is secure the Easy Needle Multi-Threader to a surface, insert the cushions into the unit, slide the needles into the cushions, Place your thread onto the dowel and thread your needles with the Easy Needle Threader. Stylists who use this product will never have to thread another needle in between weaving again. With the Easy Needle Multi Threader, they can save time, save money, increase their clientele, and provide a wonderful experience for their clients. show as promised I have attorney uh, Mike Renfro in the house <laughs> you know Mike I'm excited you know one thing that I've, I've, I've realized man especially in Houston Texas there are a lot of people running for judge in different jurisdictions you happen to be one of those people yes sir now you're running for a criminal court 13 in Harris County that's correct county criminal court county criminal court now describe a little bit of, to me what county criminal court is thank you uh, what County Criminal Court is, is we handle misdemeanors. Okay. Uh, misdemeanors such as DWIs, uh, criminal mischief, criminal assaults, uh, such as assault on family members, um, um, criminal trespass cases, okay. small amounts of marijuana, like possessions of marijuana, cases like that. Cases like that. Now, I know uh, the marijuana thing. That's a pretty big issue that's happening right now. And a lot of people that really didn't deserve to be in prison for a long period of time actually has been. 
in prison for a long time just on a small amount of marijuana. What do you say about that type of thing? Well, as you're well aware, there is decriminalization of marijuana all across the country now. Mm -hmm. um, in Colorado and um, uh, Los Angeles, the other states, they have it just even for recreational purposes. Yeah. But it is very, it's, it's, it's being used a lot now for medical purposes. Mm -hmm. And it's coming to Texas. Eventually, it's, it's a matter, matter of time. Huh? It's a matter of time. Texas is usually one of the last states that, that will adopt the new laws. But um, the DA district attorney's office here in Harris County has decriminalized small amounts of marijuana. So okay. if a person is stopped and they have a very small amount of marijuana, they're not taken to jail anymore. They're processed in. Okay. Uh, basically, it's like giving them a ticket. They have to complete a class. And then the case has basically never got, gotten into court. Okay. Uh, you don't ever see the case in court. Okay. That's that's you know that that can certainly be a good thing, uh, when you think about the number of people that have been incarcerated because of a small amount of marijuana, uh, and it's basically cost them their lives in a lot of ways. It is. You know. Now I know one of your platforms is bail reform. Tell me a little bit about bail reform and why that's important. Well, bail reform is a big issue now. Um, the a federal judge has made a ruling that the, um, the way Harris County handles bails and misdemeanor courts okay. um, is oppressive to people who can't afford to make bails. Mm. So there is, and the majority of the judges in the misdemeanor courts have filed uh, their lawsuit opposing that order of the judge. So there's a big to-do right now about it, but bail reform, again, is something that's being discussed. There is something in place. Uh, it's, it's guided under uh, Article 1715 okay. of the Code of Criminal Procedure. And under Article 1715, there are certain rules that uh, for fixing bail. Um, mm -hmm. So it says that bail must be Placed at a, at a sufficient amount to uh, complete the undertaking of the of what's going on, which basically means that it should be high enough to assure that a defendant is going to appear in court. Okay, okay. <laughs> so that's the idea behind. See, now I'm I'm I'm, I'm learning. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's the idea behind the bail, is to make sure that it, uh, it's supposed to ensure, sure that hopefully the, ensure, the, the, the defendants based on the it. severity of the crime. Though. Yes. Okay. And, and also, yes, the nature of the, good point, the nature of the offense, the circumstances surrounding the alleged crime should be taken into in consideration. Mm -hmm. But it shouldn't be used as a tool to oppress someone. Okay. So, and then that's the key part that is being attacked now. Um, in court is that bail is being used to oppress people because the wow. people that can make bail mm -hmm. on small cases such as the misdemeanors that I would be in court, they can get out and they can <coughs> be free and go about their business in life. But people who cannot make bail, the poor, the indigent, yeah. and we're not just talking about um, blacks and minorities, we're talking about anyone who cannot afford okay. bail. Um, they're being kept in jail, and the courts are saying that those persons should be allowed the same freedoms as those people who have the money to make bail. Gotcha, gotcha. So that, that's, that's something to take in consideration. And then you also have to take in consideration how would the victim, the future safety of a victim be affected? Um, you have different crimes with, where this, there's a fear that there may be retaliation. Okay. There may be revenge if a person gets out on bond, so the judge has to take that in consideration in assessing wow. bail also. So that all becomes a part of your job when you become judge, and I'm speaking that into existence, when you become judge in criminal court number 13 for Harris County. Most definitely. The, the judges, the magistrates, they're the one who <coughs> regulates the bail. They're the one who determines uh, what the bail is. Now, again, with the bail reform system we have, they have a... Um, I believe it's a panel or a committee okay. who analyzes uh, a person when they come in they, to, to determine what an appropriate bail should be. Okay. And normally the judge is going to follow that 
assessment. Okay, but and the then make a decision based on what that assessment of that group is. Yes. Based on that criminal activity, that right. person's criminal activity. Okay, another point that I wanted to bring up was the mental health and the criminal justice system. That's a really fine line that you see right now because you see families that have different, uh, like it could be kids, uh, but they could be adult children that have mental illness, but because there are certain legal ramifications involved, they can't get that person to a mental health institute when they need to. Uh, so, and, and they may have had some criminal mischief, but how do... How do we handle that? Uh, how does society handle that when it comes to the law? Mental health is a major concern <clears throat> in the criminal justice system. And I've been practicing now uh, for nearly 40 years. And over that period of time, you see more and more cases that come into the system where the individual has uh, suffering from some type of mental health issue. Right. So the courts, uh, and, and I can only really address what's going on in Harris County because that's primarily where well, my practice right. has been, uh -huh. but the courts here have instituted what we call mental health courts now. Okay. So that if a person comes in and is assessed with a mental health issue, if that alleged crime, and I say alleged crime, mm -hmm. uh, that that person is accused of uh, is, is because of that person's mental health status, then the case can be referred over to a mental health court. And okay. then that court will do all it can to try to address that mental health issue and also try to get that person the help that he needs, he, really? or, she, okay. he or she needs. So when you say a mental health court, now I'm unfamiliar with the mental health. Is that something new that's in the criminal justice system? Relatively new. Relatively new. Relatively new. Is that right? Yes. I think that's very important because I think they would be more sensitive to those people that came in that were mentally ill as opposed to the irregular court system when they come into those court systems. Most definitely so. Most definitely so. You have, you have a judge who deals with nothing but the mental health cases. You have a staff of attorneys who are trained mm -hmm. to deal with those mental health cases. And even the district attorney's office who um, handles the prosecution of those types of cases they're more sensitive uh, to those types of issues also. Okay, okay, okay. So there's and progress probably. being made. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Along the way. Along the way. All right. Yeah. So it all now, takes time. Yes, it does, yeah, it, it does. Now, I, uh, one of another, another one of our key points is indigent defense. Tell me a little bit about indigent de uh, defense. I started practicing law in 1978. <coughs> okay. And from 1978 up until... I would say maybe seven, eight years ago, I could be a little bit off on the timing there, but mm -hmm. up until that time, we've always operated on what's called a court-appointed system. Okay. That is a judge, when he has persons who come into his court who are not able to afford an attorney, will appoint someone to represent that person. Uh, usually these lawyers are lawyers who have their own private practices. Mm -hmm. Uh, so they represent people who come in and, and pay them. Right. But they also do what we call court appointments. Okay. And that's been our way of doing things for years and years. Um, like I said, about maybe eight, ten years ago, that was changed, and and the state legislature did enact a public defender the defender's office for Harris County, and funded it for a while. Okay. And but they then turned the funding over to the county. Itself, so now the county. Changed. Well, no, not necessarily, but the county is responsible for the funding of the court-appointed system. I mean, of the public defender's office now, okay. and the public defender's office handles maybe fifteen or twenty percent of all cases that come into the criminal justice system. Okay, 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 gotcha. You know, it's very interesting. I'm learning so much about the criminal justice system. Uh, sitting here talking to you, and like I say with all the guests that come on the show, it's always good for me to learn something. This show is about educating, motivating, and inspiring people, uh, and that's what we're doing. Now, I want to know a little bit more about what inspired you uh, to run for judge in Criminal Court 13 in Harris County. We're going to find out a little bit more about that when we come back in just a moment. You guys stick around. We'll be back. Sky Trues Custom Eyewear has taken the world by storm. In only eight months, Sky Trues has gained the eyes of many, including celebs like Big Sean, Little Flip, Destiny Child, 
Soldier Boy, just to name a few. Through custom design, Sky Truths can put your imagination on your frames. I bring to you the next big thing in Houston, Sky Truths, created by Golden Boy, the musician, the artist, the entrepreneur, and grassroots marketing genius. Be inspired, Sky Truths, custom designed frames. Sky Truths! Tired of wasting time threading needles? What would you do with more time? Would you spend it with family? Grow your business? Take a class or travel? There's a remarkable new tool available to help make your dream for more time a reality. The Easy Needle Multi-Threader was designed for weavers, seamstresses, and quilters to thread multiple needles in a fraction of the time than traditional methods. It eliminates tangles and prevents the possibility of germs and bacteria due to fallen needles and threads onto the floor. It's efficient. It's innovative. It's a time saver. Increase your productivity with Easy Needle Multi-Threader today. edition of the Feral Phelps Show with my guest, attorney Mike Renfro. Welcome back, Mike. Thank you. Awesome. you know, now, Mike, you're a, a, a graduate of Texas Southern Thurgood Marshall Law School, right? I, I attended Texas Southern University very proudly from 1969 to 1973. Got my degree in political science, uh -huh. and then I went back to school in 1975 into Thurgood Marshall School of Law okay. at Texas Southern University, and got my Juris Doctorate degree in 1978. Successfully passed the bar, and in May 15, 1978, I I began practicing law and hung my shingle. Oh, hey, all right, all right. All right. You know, it's it's always great to have an attorney as a friend. Because you can just call on them when you need to call on them, you know what I'm saying? So I may have to call on Brother Renfro. We never know what's going to happen in life. But uh, I, I think that's great. I want to make sure that I mentioned that Texas Southern University was, was where you got your doctorate uh, and you became an attorney and all this good stuff. Yes, I think that was important that we say that. Uh, Houston Zone. Yes, sir. Uh, and I, I say that for a reason. Uh, this, this man is here in Houston. He went to school in Houston. He got his doctorate at Texas Southern University right here in the great city of Houston, which he is actually running for a judge in. Uh, so I think that's important because it, you know the citizens of Houston. I do. A little I bit do. better than somebody else that's just here and a, and a practicing attorney. I do. you got a little bit more history here. So I think that's one of the things that will help to make you a good judge as well. Now, what do you say to this? When I say to you, Attorney Mike Renfro, what would make you a good judge for criminal court, court 13 in Harris County? And my answer, Farrell, is that <coughs> I have the experience. I have been practicing law, as I said, nearly 40 years. In May, it will be 40 years. I have tried everything from capital murder down to shoplifting. I have represented thousands and thousands of people um, in criminal defense. I have gotten murder cases dismissed. I have, gotten, I have tried cases and gotten not guilties on burglary of habitations and burglary of buildings and assaults. Okay. I know how to represent people in that area. And I, I know that as a judge, I have the expertise, I have the ability to make decisions that will be fair to both sides. Okay. I want to protect all individuals' rights. I want to make sure that, like I said, both sides are treated fairly. And I want to have my court in a, in a, in a way that People who come in there won't feel intimidated. 
They won't feel uncomfortable. They, they will believe that they are in a courtroom where they're receiving fair and impartial justice. And, that's, and I believe that yeah. I am the one that can do that. Not yet. Yeah. And, 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 and very well spoken, by the way. Thank you. Uh, I, I think that's that's excellent. And when you go into the court, I know just for myself, and I'll just uh, I'll be honest, going into just in traffic court, no. I got to go on in May. <laughs> uh, you know, they say to keep it real, you know, you hear when you keep it real, you know what I'm saying? But, um, but even in going to something as simple as that, you know, uh, you always want to get somebody that's fair and somebody that's going to look at both sides of the fence, you know. Uh, I know I feel more comfortable when I see that type of judge. Mm -hmm. And I've been in courtrooms where I didn't see that happening. Um, when I was there in support of uh, one of my friend's sons, who uh, was in a big case that was right here in the city of Houston that made national headlines uh, when it did. And I remember sitting in that courtroom and how that judge was in that particular <coughs> courtroom and how we felt that we really wasn't being treated fairly in that moment. Uh, and wishing that we would have had someone that could actually see both sides of the fence. So when you talk about uh, being a judge that will be sensitive to the needs of the people and operate with a level in, of integrity, I think it's important that uh, that we have that type of judge in, uh, in, in Harris County uh, Criminal Court 13. I have, uh, Farrell, I've had so many clients and their families, families in particular, who come to me after we go to court, they said, they, they just, they're so mean in there. The bailiffs are rude, and, and the, the court personnel, they're so indifferent. And the judge, he's just, he just, he's just so uh, mean and cruel. And that affects me as yeah. a person, because yeah. I know when yeah. I go into the courtroom, and I'm not saying this is the case mm -hmm. in every courtroom I go in, I, I won't say that, because there are some judges court personnel and bailiffs who are, can be the friendliest people you ever want to meet. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times when you go into court, you see that. And I know that when I become judge, because this thing trickles down from the top. Yes. When you see a judge being mean and rude, you're going to see the court personnel being the same. You're going to see the <laughs> bailiffs. Consistency the is there, they, huh? They, they do that. So in my courtroom, it's going to be understood that everyone will be treated fairly. They will be treated with courtesy and respect, because that's what people expect. It's not the judge's courtroom, mm -hmm. it's the people's courtroom. Right. Right. Not the judge's courtroom, but the people's courtroom. You know, and I can't help but to think about this old adage, you know, that uh, from Martin Luther King, actually, um, and, and this is Black History Month. Uh, when we want to be judged by the content of our character, not the color of our skin. Yes, so right. often when we're in the criminal justice system, we are judged and prejudged based right. on the color of our yes, skin. Right. Without our stories being heard mm -hmm. in a fair manner in which they should be. So when we talk about a judge that's going to be fair, uh, I think it's important that we check out that person's character. And, and, and that's overall when you're in a judge's position. You know, I'm really excited by, about you becoming the judge for criminal court number 13 in Harris County, uh, needless to say, and uh, I, I certainly support you. Thank and you. that's why we are having this show today. And if there's anything else that you want to say to the people out there, I ask that you go ahead and say it right into that camera. Let them know. Well, let me just say this. Being, being a black man, being a, being a man who came up in the 60s, late 50s in the 60s for that matter. So I was on, I was at the end of segregation and the beginning of what I call desegregation because in my mind, integration is just really now happening. Um, so I, I, I was affected by that and I'm still affected by that. When I go in the courtroom, I'm affected by it because it's, it's very obvious that what we see today is more people of color being the ones who have been charged with crimes, who have been tagged as criminals, and who are, have been sent off to prison to be warehoused. So being the, a person who has seen all this, who has been a part of all this, I want to create change. I want to be at a level where when the young people that come into my courtroom will at least give them an opportunity to change their lives, to, to make a become more responsible to be people who can be productive persons in this society. So I will keep yep. that in mind in making my rulings. Now understood that in some cases you have to give out punishment. 
That's just that's a fact. Part that's a of fact being of a judge, a, doing of being a judge in the criminal justice system. But where appropriate, where I can, I am going to reach out my hand and try to help a young person or any person for that matter try to improve their lives because we need to stop this recidivism that we have of constantly going in and out of prison, being tagged as criminals, and then you can't do anything. Absolutely. You know, that's why you know what our, our first guest said when she talked about transforming. Uh, it would be great if those prisoners or those people who have gone into jail consecutively could transform themselves so that they don't be so that it doesn't become repetitive mm -hmm. in their lives. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate you coming on the Farrell Phelps show and sharing uh, everything that you shared today and I certainly wish you the best uh, in running for, for judge uh, in, in criminal court number 13 for Harris County. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this edition of the Farrell Phelps show. For more information on this show you can certainly reach me at let's talk about it 12 TV at gmail.com. That's let's talk about it 12 TV on G at gmail.com. You can also go to my YouTube channel. Simply go to YouTube, type in the name Farrell Phelps, a list of my shows are right there for your viewing pleasure. Until next time, folks, we'll see you then.